Hello, it's David Williams again. Today's topic is phase shifts, and specifically phase shifts as they apply to AC signals and usually sinusoidal AC signals. Now what you see right here are two sinusoidal waveforms, a red one and a blue one, and you can sort of make out that they are the same frequency, except that they reach their peaks and they cross the, the zero crossing at uh, slightly different times and a phase shift is really just a, a measurement of the relative difference between the the timing of these two different signals so you can make the timing of when they cross the zero points like they do here and you get some phase shift of, of theta or alternatively we could measure the, the the difference and the relative difference between when they reach their peaks and you would get the same amount of same amount of phase shift now I'm gonna draw some some sinusoidal figures so they're not going to look quite as nice as these ones, but hopefully you'll still get the, the same idea. Now to start off with, we got a plot here of voltage and time. So we're going to look at the phase shift of the phase shifts of, of voltage, volt signals, AC volts, voltage. So the first the first example, we've got two sine waves. Here's a blue one with some peak and some frequency and here's a red one, a red AC signal it's got a different peak but you'll see that it reaches its peak at the same time as the blue one, it crosses zero at the same time as the blue one, it reaches the negative peak at the same time as this blue one, it comes back the same you come back to zero at the same time as the blue one so in this in this particular case we've got Zero, we have no phase shift. There's no phase difference between the two. They they uh, reach the peaks and cross the zeros at the same time. Okay, let's look at another example. We'll plot out voltage as it changes over time. Again, a trusty old blue signal here. Trusty old blue sinusoidal signal. And I've got a red signal. Well, let's let's label this the blue signal. Let's call this signal A. We got a red one. Let's call this signal B, and B has a different amplitude, but it and it reaches its peak amplitude well before A does, and it crosses the zero well before A does, and it reaches the negative peak before A, and it reaches and it crosses zero going the other way before A. So in this case, we've got a situation where the signal B comes before A. So we say is B leads A, or the other way to say it is that A lags B. And to write this out mathematically, we have the equation for A. Voltage of A as it changes over time is going to be equal to the v, the peak voltage of A times two sine of 2 pi Ft. And the equation for B to show that B is leading A by a certain amount peak of B times sine of 2 pi Ft. But there's one more factor we want to take into account, the fact that A is leading B, so if we give that some value, we can call it maybe phi here. So we designate some amount of phase shift. Some amount of phase shift phi. So this plus phi is indicating that B is leading A. And from graphically, we can see that B leads A. Now, a third example. We'll stick with the same the same sinusoidal signal for A. So this is the define this as our reference. A is our reference. So there's A. And in this case, B is going to be lagging behind A. So it reaches the zero crossing after A, reaches its peak after A, crosses zero the other way after A does, and then reaches its negative peak at some time after A. And what happens at the beginning here? Well, that's the negative peak there. Oops. I don't I don't need that little red line there, but I'll just leave it. So there's my B. And and in this case we can say that A A is leading B, or A leads B, or the other way to say that is that B lags behind A. 
And if we were to write these out mathematically, the equations for A, A is a, so we're finding that, that as the reference, so there's no phase shift. So we just have the peak and some amount of whatever the frequency is. And then B does have a phase shift, and it's leading behind, or it's lagging behind A. And to indicate the lagging, we're going to subtract some amount of phase difference between the relative, the relative difference between when the two reach their peaks. So that distance there, whatever that happens to be, is our phase shift of phi. Of course, we could also have measured it here. It's going to, be, it'll give us the same number. We can measure it between the zero crossing and the zero crossing. Um, I'll give you one more example, and this example sort of shows where the why everything is relative. So if we have our A signal there, and our B signal is going to be 180 degrees out of phase with A. So several ways we could say this. We could say that A is 180 degrees out of phase with B. We could say that A leads B by 180 degrees. Change back to black here. We could say that A lags behind B by 180 degrees. We could say that B leads A by 180 degrees. Or we could say that B lags behind A by 180 degrees. And anyway, you also know, too, that A is equal to negative B. So if this is sine 2 pi f t, this is going to be negative sine 2 pi f t, with whatever whatever amplitude included in, in there as well. Hopefully this, this gives you a little bit of information about phase shifts and the fact that phase shifts are our comparison of, of time shifting of, of sinusoidal signals. I, I guess they don't even have to be sinusoidal signals, but AC signals anyway, usually sinusoidal. And I will see you in the next video.